Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about muscular and glandular control of behavior. Hope you know what is muscles and glands and in this video we will discuss little bit the anatomy of muscles and glands and of course this muscles and glands how it is related to our behavior. Okay and before going to the video we will see today's quote today's quote is be yourself and people will like you of course guys try to be yourself while doing something while acting while performing in your career in your profession your dreams in your uh, way of life wherever try to be yourself of course, of course you can take the role model from other places from others but still try to be yourself take the good things from them after that try to filter the things try to analyze everything and try to be yourself and if you do like that and if you are trying to be yourself definitely others will try, try and will start to like you of course they will tell he is good he is good i like him she is good i like him he is good or she is good we like him we like them so definitely definitely others will start like you so try to be yourself and people will like you guys by jeff kenny okay we are going to the video muscles and glands and their controls of behavior muscles muscle is a tissue present in a body which can drag to produce force it acts as a source of power and muscle is responsible for all kind of movement in our body simple thing right muscle is a tissue which present in our body which control all kinds of activities which helps in movement which helps in standing sitting jumping rocking whatever you're doing stretching muscle is the thing which is developing a force and this force will help to maintain the balance of our body there are three type of muscles we can see they are skeletal muscles cardiac muscles and smooth muscles so these are all three muscles we can see in our body skeletal muscles cardiac muscles and smooth muscles now we are going to see the anatomy of muscles I told you three type of muscles, skeletal muscles, cardiac muscles and smooth muscles. Skeletal muscles attach to our body and it is under our conscious control. That means in our voluntary control. So skeletal muscles means around our skeleton there is a muscles. That muscle will help in all kind of our movements activity and it is under our control. Next thing is cardiac muscles. Cardiac related to what? Heart. So cardiac muscles responsible for cardiac functioning to control and pump blood. It is under involuntary control. So cardiac muscles we can see in our heart. Myocardium. Myocardium is muscle layer of heart. That muscle layer will help in contraction and relaxation of heart or contraction and dilation of heart to control and pump the blood. And it is under involuntary control. Next is smooth muscle. Smooth muscle covers all organs like eyes, ear, etc. heart and this helps in involuntary functions like digestion. Next, functions of muscle. There are a lot of functions for muscles from head to foot of our body. Some specific things only I am telling. Movement of our body, walking, hand movement, respiration, breathing, speaking, facial expression, digestion, elimination, so and so, etc, etc, etc. So, muscle is helping for all kinds of our activities from head to foot. Now, what's our topic today? Muscles and behavior. Of course, these muscles are controlling our behavior in different way, in different time, depend upon the situation. Muscle will control all kind of behavior and actions in our body like facial expression. Depend upon our activity, depend upon the situation, tension, stress, emotion. Our body will get stretched sometimes. So when we get angry or when we are in a deep emotion, your face muscles will get stretched. Your so muscle is supporting to control the behavior. So automatically it is visible to others also. The facial expression that is a type of behavior right so muscles will helps in controlling the facial expression sometime movement of different parts of body in different way maintenance of body posture based on our movement so we are in angry we are sad we are calm we are relaxed whatever it is our muscle will help to maintain the posture of our body then speaking and writing in different way well, i am speaking right now so while speaking my muscles are supporting to speak Speaking is a kind of behavior and writing is a kind of behavior. So 
speaking, writing, for this kind of activities, my muscles are supported. So I'm moving my hand and I'm talking. So while moving my hand, my muscles are supporting to flex, relax, to spread our fingers. So speaking and supporting. So in that time, muscles are supporting. So behaviors and muscles are directly related to each other. Then mixing and chewing food in different ways. Then blood flow regulation based on the situation of your body. So muscles are directly related to controlling our behavior. Next, what is muscle tone? Muscle tone is a heart of muscles which helps to control all kind of movement. It means contraction of muscles which is a constant tension produced to keep our body straight and also to maintain all movement. So muscle tone is the heart of muscles which helps in all kind of movements. What is gland? So, first part is over, second thing is glands. Gland is an organ in our body which produces different secretion to perform different function in our body. So, it is also a kind of organ which is present in our body and it produces different kinds of secretion, juices, to perform different kinds of activities. There are two types of glands we have. First one is exocrine gland or duct gland endocrine gland or ductless gland exocrine and endocrine that word is more famous comparing to duct and ductless but exocrine means duct gland there's a tube or duct we can see ductless glands means endocrine then first thing is exocrine glands or duct glands they releases secretion to small ducts or tube into the body cavities or to the surface of the body Example, salivary gland, sweat gland, tear gland. So, they have a small tube or ducts and they will secrete their secretion into the surface of body. Actually, during some tension, stress or any other emotions, these glands will activate. So, based on our behavior, these glands will activate. For example, if you are in a tension, sweating will come. But if you have tension, body will get sweat. Or if you are emotionally unstable, you will get tears. So it indicates that water, your glands, that means exocrine glands are directly related to how our behavior. Next is endocrine gland or ductless glands. Endocrine glands releases hormone and these hormones are responsible for behavior. So among all these kind of glands and uh, muscles, endocrine gland or ductless glands are playing a major role in controlling our behavior. These hormones will help to develop our personality and other healthy functions of our body. Next, there are different type of glands that means ductless glands which helps to control our behavior. Among the first one is pituitary gland. Pituitary gland in this picture you can see in the base of brain you can see that. Situated in the base of brain which descends from hypothalamus and this gland is otherwise known as master glands because it controls all the messages and other glands. It secretes growth hormone and pain relief endorphin. The pituitary gland is playing a major role in controlling our behavior because it controls all other glands and it is known as master gland. Next is thyroid gland. Thyroid gland in this picture if you, clearly you can see where thyroid gland is situating. Thyroid gland releases thyroxin, that's a hormone which is secreted by thyroid gland and it controls our metabolism appetite. Imbalance in thyroxin, that means decreased thyroxin level leads to different behavioral problem that is overactivity. In hypothyroidism, less amount of thyroxin, that means hypothyroxin leads to tiredness and psychological disturbances or mental tension. So it indicates that what? Thyroid hormone, less thyroid hormone lead to behavioral problem. Next is parathyroid gland. Parathyroid gland secrete parathyroxine. Same like thyroid gland is secreting thyroxine. Then we here parathyroid gland is secreting parathyroxine. And less secretion leads to excitability, muscular tremors, spasms and cramps. While coming to behavioral aspects, if decreased production leads to unstable mental tension and irritability. Of course, guys, hypoparathyroidism leads to mental tension and irritability and also lack of interest and emotional disturbance. So what it means, this gland or these hormones are directly related to 
our behavior. Next is adrenal gland. Adrenal glands have two parts. Medulla, that is the inner part. Cortex, that is the outer part. Basically, cortex. Less secretion of cortex leads to lethargy, lack of interest, depression, poor memory, tiredness, hard voice, rough skins, and growth of hairs on chest. So, it indicates that what? It, produce, it, it creates both physiological and psychological problem in that clearly I am telling here that lack of interest, depression, poor memory, lethargy, etc. Et will arise if there is decreased secretion of cortex. So, this adrenal gland is directly related to the development of or formation or control of our behavior. It has two part medulla and cortex. And medulla, what is medulla? That is the inner part of this adrenal gland. Adrenal medulla secrete two hormones. First one is adrenaline, second one is noradrenaline. Adrenaline is otherwise known as epinephrine and noradrenaline is otherwise known as norepinephrine and they are playing a major role in control of all kind of emotions so when you think about our behavior when you think about or when someone is discussing about the behavior change directly we will talk about epinephrine and norepinephrine so epinephrine and norepinephrine is playing a major role in controlling our emotions and behavior like how to act how to behave how to do the things in different situations and heartbeat respiration etc 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 Next is sex glands. Sex glands also playing a major role in control, control, uh, also playing a major role in our behavior or control. Sex glands are sex hormones which control sexual activity and personality. Androgen is the male sex hormone and estrogen is the female sex hormone. Over that means increased and under that means less. The creation of the sex hormone that is androgen and estrogen leads to physiological problems as well as psychological problems so it also shows that sex glands problems also leads to behavioral problems psychological and physiological problems so these are all the glands and muscles and how it is controlling our behavior we had a discussion regarding muscles different type of muscles and how it is controlling and how it is related to behavior and glands and how these glands are controlling and how it is related to our behavior. Hope you understand. Thank you.